Math 3, Unit 6, Section 1. We're going to start this unit by talking about how to simplify radical expressions. This is something that you should know a little bit of. Okay, so this first section hopefully is going to be relatively easy. But if we have the square root of 49, we know we need two numbers that are the same in order to bring them out from under the square root. And so in this case, 49 is 7 times 7. And so we know that the answer here is 7. Okay, now when you have the square root of a decimal, I personally think it's easier to change it to a fraction. Um, and so we know that 16, this is going out to the hundreds place, correct? And so 0.16 as a fraction is 16 hundredths or 16 over 100. Now, if you know how to change it from a decimal and you know that 0.4 times 0.4 equals 0.16, you can do it that way as well. Um, so when you have a fraction under a root, it's really the fraction, it's the square root of 16 over the square root of 100. And the square root of 16 is what? Four. And the square root of 100 is 10. And then you would reduce that, which is two-fifths. And if you kept that as a decimal, it's 0.4. Okay, so you could do that either way. So knowing this information right here with the roots, um, we know that over here, this is going to be the square root of 36 over the square root of 121. And what is the square root of 36? Six. Six and the square root of 121? 11. 11. And can that re be reduced? No. Okay. So when we have a cubed root here, the cubed root is 64, that means what? Very good. We need the same number three times, okay? And so 64, does anyone know what the cubed root of 64 is? Four, four. It is 4, good. Because 64 is 16 times 4, and then 16 is 4 and 4. So that makes your 3, and so this answer is 4. The interesting thing about cubed roots, do you guys remember if you have a negative underneath the cubed root, what happens? It just becomes a negative number um, because what is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? Negative 27. And so when you have a negative under a cubed root, you just bring that out and it's a negative. So we're just going to take the negative and then cubed root of 27. And the cubed root of 27 is what? It's just 3, yeah. And we already have the negative in front. So 27 is 9 times 3, right? And then 9 is 3 and 3. So that's your group of 3s. And so this answer is negative 3. So just like how with square roots, how we would take the negative out and it becomes an i, um, if you have a cubed root or any odd root, odd roots, the negative comes out and it's just a negative. Even roots, the negative comes out and it's an i. Do we have questions on that? Okay, so therefore when we move over here to F, again, this is a cubed root, so we would just bring the negative out, so I have negative, and then cubed root of 125 over 216, and you can rewrite this, so it's a cubed root on the top and the bottom, or hopefully we know that this just means we're taking the cubed root of both the top and the bottom. Um, what is the cubed root of 125? Five. Five? And the cubed root of... 216. 6. And so the answer is negative 5 6. All right, do we have any questions there? All right, so here they just are explaining what each of these symbols are. The number here, that's your index. You have your radical sign, and that's the radicand, the number underneath your radical. Okay, so simplifying each of these, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a um, few minutes here. I would like you to simplify each of those on your own. It's up to you. I'm good either way, fraction or decimal. Okay, so just take about, I think you probably just need about a minute there.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull some sticks this morning, and um, I'd just like you to give me your answer. Do you guys need one more minute to check answers in your groups? Okay. Okay. It sounds like most of you are done. Okay, so for A right here, help me out. What is the cubed root of negative 8 or negative cubed root of 8? Okay, Chufu, what'd you get? Negative 2 is correct. So to work through that real quick, we know that 8 is 4 and 2, and 4 is 2 and 2. So cubed root, you need three of the same numbers. The negative is outside, so it's just negative 2. All right, B, help me out with this one. Tracy. Yeah, tell me how to do it first. Or how you did it. Okay, so changing this to 36 over 100. Great. And square root of 100 is 10. Perfect. And reduce that to 3 Perfect. Okay. Um, as a decimal, this would have been 0.6. Okay. And last one, D, the square root of 81 is Alondra. Can you help me? Nine. That one's, yeah, relatively easy there. Okay. So far, so good. Yes. Question. Yes. Okay, moving on. So this is where it's kind of new, and it's starting to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, um, so I want you just to read this to yourself here at the top. Okay, so... <coughs> If this root right here, if your index is an even number, you need to write that answer as an absolute value. The reason is, is that we don't exactly know what this value is. And we need to make sure that it's positive. <coughs> Okay, and the only way to make sure something is positive is to take the absolute value of it. Okay, so what I do is, because this can kind of be confusing, because if it's an odd root, you don't have to worry about absolute values because we know that under odd roots we can have negative numbers, correct? It'll just come out as a negative. So we only have to worry about using absolute values when there is an even root. And so I will sometimes just like, oh, this is an even root, um, absolute value. I'll just kind of write this to myself because I need to remind myself it may be needed on this problem. Okay? So let's go ahead and work through this. We're doing the square root, and so we're looking at each of these pieces. And 81 is going to end up being what? 9 and 9, so we have a group of 9s. Now, it's up to you on how you do this. Um, for me, x to the fourth, I know I'm going to get an x squared and an x squared, and I just like to circle each of my groups to remind me how many groups I'm bringing out. And then y squared is another group, and I have nothing left over. The things that I have left over, I normally box them to remind myself that they're left over. So when I write this answer, what am I going to write it as? 9x squared y. Okay, now let's say x was a negative number. If we squared it, it would end up becoming a positive. And so I don't have to worry about absolute values on the x squared part. But on the y, if it was negative, it would be negative. And so I have to put absolute values on the y part. Okay, 
Why do we have to do that? <laughs> so because these are variables, correct? We have no idea if they're positive or negative. And under even roots, we can't have negative numbers. So the only way to guarantee that this right here will be a positive value and work out is to make sure it is, and that is by giving it absolute values. Okay? The x's we don't have to worry about because if for some reason it was a negative, when you square it, it would become a positive. So you only have to worry about odds when you get odds out. Okay? Or I mean, even roots, odd out. Okay. So, am I going to have to worry about absolute values on part B? No. No. Why not? Good. Yeah. Your index here is a 3, which is odd. And so anytime the index is odd, you don't have to worry about absolute values. We only have to worry about absolute values when the index is even. Okay, so this is a cubed root. So for the a's, I have three of them. So a cubed, that makes one group. So for the b to the 15th, I just write them in threes. So I, I have b to the third, that's three, six, nine, 12, 15. You do not have to do it the way that I'm doing it. Just for me, it just organizes things. Okay? So how would I end up writing this answer? A and then B to the fifth. Do we have any questions? Okay. C. What is the first thing I should deal with on C? Very good. Anytime you see a negative, you want to take care of that first. Now, it is an odd root, so therefore, what do I do with that negative? What does it become? What happens? Yeah, we just bring it out and it becomes a negative. So I have negative cubed root x to the sixth, y to the 18th. Okay, the next thing, because it's the cubed root, we need how many for each group? Three. And so I would write this as x to the third, three, and then that makes six, correct? So I have two groups. And for y to the 18th, I'd go three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. Now there are shortcuts, like I said, you could do this differently. I just want you to understand what's happening. And so what will my final answer on this be? So don't forget about the negative and then x squared and then y to the sixth. And again, it was x squared because we had two groups for the x's and for the y's there was one, two, three, four, five, six groups. And so that's why it's y to the sixth. Do we have questions? Do we have to show work on this for the um, I'd like a little bit just to make sure that you understand it. It shouldn't take too long. Um, we can talk about that more later, though. Okay, so D. What do you notice about D? There's a number in front. Okay. What else? It's an even root. And so anytime it's an even root, I like to make a little note to myself saying, okay, I might need absolute values. Okay. So otherwise we forget that you need them in order to have the correct answer, okay? So 72, what does 72 break down to? Okay, so let's do nine and eight, that works. And then nine breaks down to three and three, and eight breaks down to two, two, and two. Is everybody okay with that? So I have a group of threes, I have a group of twos, and then I have one two that's left over, and again, I usually just box anything that's left over to remind me it stays in that root box, okay? So for x to the fifth, I need to write those in groups of twos, correct? And so we'd have two, four, and then one makes five, correct? So 
That's a group, a group, and then one left over. Y to the sixth, we would have that as two, four, six. All right, so far so good? So now we're gonna go ahead and write this out. So starting with our numbers, whatever you have in front just gets multiplied with everything else that you're bringing out. So out front I have a five and then we're gonna multiply times three which makes, times two which makes 30. Okay, so we have 30. And then I'm gonna have what? x squared. Now, do I need to worry about absolute values when I it ends up being x squared out in front? So let's think about it. If you have something squared and it's negative, negative times a negative will end up being a... So do we need to worry about putting absolute values around this? No, because even if it was a negative, when you square it, it'll become a positive. Okay? Now... For the y's, how many y's do I have? Three. Do I need to worry about an absolute value on that? Yes. yes, because if it was a negative, a negative to the third power would give you a negative. And we need to make sure it's positive because it's an even root. And if it's not positive, it would end up making an imaginary number. And we're only dealing with real numbers right now. Is this okay? And then we do the r square root and then what's left over inside. 2x. Okay, do we have questions? Anything that you want me to go back through on this problem? Okay, do you want to ask me something? Stephanie, you have a question? Okay, we're going to move on to E. Um, okay, do I have to worry about absolute values on E? Why not? What is, so when you're deciding on absolute values, it's based on your index value, okay? So with this being a cubed root, we don't have to worry about negatives because you can get a negative answer, okay? On even roots, when this is like a square root, if I had a negative underneath here, it would make an imaginary number, which is not real, and we are only dealing with real solutions right now, okay? And so even roots, need absolute values where odd roots you'll get a negative answer which is is okay okay so 56 what does 56 break down to or what two numbers multiply to be 56 very good 8 times 7 and then we know 8 is really what 2 times 2 times 2 so I have a group of twos and a seven left over. Okay, eight of the ninth, we're gonna count that out in threes because we have a three for our index. So eight to the third, and then we get another three which makes six, and another three which makes nine. For our Bs, we have five, and so we would have three and then I don't have three more, and so I'm left over with B to the second. So one has a circle and one has a box because that one stays in our root. And then C to the eighth will be C to the third, C to the third, that's three, that's six, and then what? C squared, and that's left over. Okay, so let's try to answer this, or write this one out. So we already have a three outside, and we're bringing a two out, which will end up making that what? Six. Now I already have a to the second power out, and I'm taking out how many more? Three, which can, is going to make it what? A to the fifth. Good. Bs, I'm going to have what? Just B. Good. And then Cs will be? Good, and then we have to write the cubed root and what is left over inside. Seven, B squared, C squared. 
And again, I don't have to worry about putting any absolute values here because my index is a three. Anytime that's odd, we're fine because we can get negative answers and be okay. Do you want to ask me any questions right now? Okay, are you guys ready to try F on your own? Let's just give it a try. Let's see what you can come up with. Okay, do you have to worry about absolute values on this one? Yes. Why? Because it's an even root. Okay? Whenever it's an even root, you have to worry about absolute values. Okay? And I'll walk around and answer some questions as you have. And when you get your answer, raise your hand and I'm going to come around and check. Also check in your groups because I'm going to pull sticks on this one for piece by piece. Some of you are still confused, but I'm going to help you work through it. You think so? Okay. Do you guys want me to give you the answer first? Okay. So the answer should be 6 absolute value of x, y to the fourth, z to the fourth, and then root 2xy. Okay. So we're going to work through that now to see how we got there. All right. First stick. Um, Rylan, what did you do first? Very good. So 9 times 8, and then 9 is? 
Okay, so we have some groups there, two left over. Thank you, Rylan. Okay, moving on. Okay, Kayla, what would you do next? Group the X's, yeah. okay, and so how did you write it? I put X squared and just Perfect, so we have one group, one left over. Great, okay, next for the Y's, she's not here. Stephanie, how did you do the Y's? Um, Perfect, so that means we have three groups there, one left over. Now make sure you pay attention, there's a Y out here. So when I end up having all the Ys, I'm gonna end up with how many Ys out in front? Four. Four, okay. And then Zs, help me out, how would you do the Zs, Cole? How'd you write out the Zs? So did you just write out all eight Zs? Yeah, you can totally do that. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we need two for each group, correct? And so you would circle them in pairs. Okay, and just remember that each thing that you circle represents one group, correct? All right, so now we are going to start with the answer. Okay, so with my numbers, okay, Tigran, what is going to be the number that ends up being out in front? Six, because there's a group of threes, a group of twos, and then we multiply them together and we get six. Very good. Okay, now we move in alphabetical order. Some of you were not in alphabetical order, but when you're doing this, you should be. Okay, so we're going to move to the X's now. And so, um, Alyssa, how would I write with the X's? Um, so six good. Oh, okay, so she already did absolute value there. So she knew that when she brought this X out, it is going to need an absolute value because there's only one of it. And if it was negative, it would actually end up giving me an imaginary number. And so because this X is only to the first power, it needs absolute values. Okay? All right, so now we're going to move on to the Ys. Emily, how would I write the Ys? Y to the fourth. Do we need absolute values on that? No. no, because if it was a negative, a negative to the fourth power would end up making a? A negative to the fourth power would make a? Positive. Positive. Okay, good. So we don't have to worry about absolute values there. Okay, next we're moving on to the Z's. Jackie, help me with the Z's. Z to the fourth, very good, because there's one, two, three, four groups. Z to the fourth, okay? So I've worked through everything that goes on the outside. The last thing is to write our root with anything on the inside. So Jeffrey, will you help me out on what it will be? Okay, so what's gonna be left over on the root on the inside? How do I write that? It'd be 2xy on the inside. Very good, 2xy, and I just go through and look for anything that's boxed. If you got confused at all, you could highlight anything that's boxed to remind yourself and all that that stays in the box. I thought that Y though pairs with the other Y, so it's not over. This Y doesn't pair with anything because it's already out. It's already a group that's out. Yes, Alexis. I'm still kind of confused on like the absolute value because you said how the X is by itself, so that's going to have like the absolute value, but on like the Y, like the Y. It's not that it's by itself, it's that the x here is to the first power. And if you had a negative to the first power, it'd be a negative, and we, that would actually end up giving me an imaginary number. And so same thing here, it's, it's to an odd power, so anytime you have an odd power, when you bring it out, it needs the absolute value. Trini. Yeah, so when it comes out when it's odd, that's when you need the absolute value. So even root, but it comes out as an odd. Okay. All right. Do we have any more questions right now? Do you guys feel a little bit better about this? Okay. So this is still a little bit different. So we are solving. They only want real solutions. Okay. Now remember when we take a square root of something, 
it has to end up being, okay, so if I'm solving this, right, we take the square root of both sides. Do you guys remember what happens when you bring this out? And we just talked about it right now. It becomes a what? It's going to have to be the absolute value of x, correct? Yes. This is an even root, right? An even root. And I get an x out. It's the absolute value, okay? Equals, and what's the square root of 121? <laughs> 11. Okay, which means for this answer, inside this absolute value, x could equal what? 11 or negative 11. And so x equals positive negative 11. And this goes way back to unit, I don't know, 3 or something? I don't know. Okay, now next one x to the third power equals negative 125. If we have x to the third, what am I going to take? I'm going to use a cubed root, correct? Do I have to worry about absolute values on this one? No. No. <laughs> cubed roots, we don't have to worry about absolute values. It's just the answer is what it is. So what's the cubed root of x cubed? x. And then the cubed root of negative 125, will we always just bring out that negative? So we have a negative, and it's going to be negative what? 5. OK. x squared. What am I going to do for this one? To solve for x. Okay, we can make it a fraction first. I like that. x squared equals, and I would write this as what? 1 over 100, and then what will I do? We're going to, in order to get that answer, we do what? We take the square root. Am I going to need to worry about absolute values on this one? Yes. What is the square root of x squared? Very good. X and absolute values. What's the square root of 1? 1. What's the square root of 100? 10. And then that means, because we're dealing with absolute value, X actually equals what? Very good. Plus or minus 1 over 10. Or it can also be plus or minus 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is the same as 1 over 10. And that is your answer. Do we have any questions there? Yes. No. You can try it in your calculator. 